Years ago, when I was 20, I experienced an unusual situation. It was in the evening. I was strongly concerned about something. I was in a rental apartment at the time, sitting motionless for hours and waiting. And emotionally, my anxiety was at its peak. My eyes were focused on the cupboard. When my anxiety reached the highest point, one of the shelves literally exploded and the entire contents of the cupboard tumbled down and shattered to pieces. I was frightened, not so much by the terrible noise and rumble, as by the clear feeling that I caused this mess myself with my own emotions. I would like to ask you about how this can be interpreted. Could or should I try to develop this kind of quality further? What can such abilities be useful for, and how can they be used for good? Such a vast question, colleagues, and it's really a beautiful plot and a beautiful story that Alexandra told us. Why is it beautiful despite the fact that it made her frightened? Because this means that, after all, the human being still retained this ability, using the power of thought to control the material world. And Alexandra, in her question, very clearly and very precisely described how this happens. We train this quality, by the way, in our very first course, the ability to control attention. There we have special practices that help us achieve such effects, but of course in this case they are controlled by our own consciousness, as we are in full awareness of what we are doing. Here, Alexandra experienced a state of an uncontrolled release of energy which was created due to a long and high concentration on the same spot. Alexandra described how she spent a long, long time, a few hours, looking at one single spot. Here you and I, colleagues, understand that consciousness doesn't fall into such a state without reason. It means that something happened to the consciousness, something so obviously stressful that made it literally curl up into a very dense point of concentrated attention. You know perfectly well that when our consciousness functions in a free and a relaxed mode, we like to think of various thoughts simultaneously, because it is boring to have only one thought at a time. We need to change them back and forth so they jump around like fleas. Because life is more interesting when you catch one thought here, one there, here you thought something, there you thought something, then you connect them all together and unfold them again. It's the process. But this is the way a consciousness behaves when it's not afraid. But when it is afraid, it does the opposite. It itself becomes this flea, concentrates itself to the maximum, compresses all its energetic informational resource to the last safe checkpoint, so to say. And if anything happens now, I will be preserving this here. It is in a compressed form, and then when it's all over, I will unfold it all again in a new energetic informational space. Like the information that you transfer from one laptop to another, you download everything to a flash drive. There you have one single spot. And that's what happens at the exact moment when you realize that something old is ending and something new is about to begin. The consciousness focused, concentrated itself, and this release occurred. When there is a lot of information, it tends to accumulate a lot of energy. When the mind focuses its gaze on the same point, it understands that this is the point where it needs to shift its energetic informational potential to, that is, its energy, which accumulated in abundance since it isn't being wasted. Your mind doesn't jump around any longer and is all focused on this single sport. It's like a supernova explosion. There is so much energy that it can no longer accrue in this materiality. And then this release happens. When you first encounter this issue, it is of course a bit frightening, but when you learn to control it, everything becomes more pleasant for both mind and body. This is the feature that the effect of telekinesis is based on, which many people possess without even knowing it.
владеют, даже не зная. But most importantly, this feature, if it is properly developed, can be used in real life in a variety of ways, ranging from controlling the surrounding space, its materiality, including people, for healing or conversely for your own protection, for example, sending an impulse by means of your will at an enemy or aggressor in order to push him away. Your enemy or aggressor can't help but to feel this, and his consciousness won't fail to get frightened, so this can serve as a certain type of weapon for you. It means that you can learn to use it differently, depending on your goals and objectives. But the fact that your consciousness, at least potentially, has this quality, and you are able to focus for a few hours at a time, says that you absolutely need to develop these qualities. Many colleagues describe such abilities of focusing the attention. For example, the very same Castaneda describes it as a way to boil water through an instant energy impulse, which is just abundant energy that escapes along the attention created by your eyes through your visual channel. Wherever you are staring at, that's where the energy goes. In this case, it was the unfortunate cupboard. But the energy could be directed in some other place. It's just that you, in the state of consciousness, needed a few hours to focus. But the more you develop this quality, the more you practice this skill, the less time you will eventually need to gather such a cluster of energy and send it in the direction you need. All it really takes is practice. I remind you, colleagues, that once upon a time, it took you a while before you could stand up on your feet and start walking. The same principle should be applied here. Напоминаю, коллеги, что и вы в свое время на ножки встали и пошли тоже не сразу. Понадобилось некое время. Здесь тот же принцип.